Last chapter of the semester. So today we're going to be talking about chapter 17, which is about inflation, unemployment, and the Federal Reserve policy. So really, again, we've touched on all three of these concepts um, early on in different chapters, but this kind of pulls it together a little bit at the end. This video should be fairly short and sweet. Um, not going to be testing y'all on a lot of the sections. So that includes 17.2, 3, and 4. Um, so really, we're just going to be talking about 17.1, um, really understanding the Phillips curve. So this is the uh, model we're going to be focusing on. So again, we talked about the two major sh um, short run macroeconomic problems that the Fed is facing, which are unemployment and inflation. And so um, uh, we want to think about like, are these two related and how are they related? So the two are related in an important way. Higher levels of inflation are associated with lower levels of unemployment and vice versa. So this relationship is known as the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve is a curve showing the short run relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. So quickly, I just wanna show you the two models. Remember we have our ADAS model and then we wanna look at um, the Phillips curve. So remember with our ADAS, we had um, GDP, and then our price level inflation, and then we had our short run aggregate supply, and then we had different aggregate demand curves. So we had, let's put 81, 82, 83. So we can see if we shift along these curves what happens is we're going to see higher levels of gdp and also higher price levels um so this graph just shows you a small increase in aggregate demand so that would be from um ad1 to ad2 leads to low inflation, so not as big of a movement um, when it comes to price, and high unemployment. So it's not going to offset that unemployment as much. Um, so, And then we're going to see that large increases in aggregate demand, so from AD1 to AD3, leads to lower um, unemployment but higher inflation. So this is what this graph is just showing you. Up here is... Um, that graphed out. But when we're talking about the Phillips curve, um, we're going to be looking at this time the relationship between inflation itself, inflation, and unemployment. Didn't leave myself enough space there. So, um, we're going to see a translation of what we showed here on this ADAS graph to the Phillips curve. So we're gonna see a downward sloping Phillips curve, a short run, short run Phillips curve. So we're going to see higher levels of inflation associated with lower levels of unemployment and lower levels of inflation associated with higher um, levels of unemployment. So kind of during the 1960s, some economists argued that the Phillips curve was a structural relationship, a relationship that depends on the basic behavior of consumers and firms, and it remains unchanged over long periods of time. So before the 1960s, really this relationship appeared to be quite stable. Um, um, if this were true, essentially if this held true, a policymaker could choose a point on the curve, um, trading 
permanently higher inflation for lower unemployment or vice versa. However, unfortunately, this um, didn't turn out to be true, unfortunately. And so allowing more inflation doesn't permanently lower unemployment. So again, by the time of the late 1960s, uh, most economists agreed that the long run aggregate supply curve was vertical. We talked about that um, several chapters ago. Um, and so remember at long run aggregate supply with the vertical long run aggregate supply, we had a graph that looked like this. Again, we have price, we have GDP, we have a long run LRAS, long run aggregate supply curve that's vertical. And then we had our equilibrium, right, with short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand at the point in which they all three intersected. And so keep in mind, um, when um, this is vertical um, and all of them are intersecting, we have um, output at potential GDP. We have the natural rate of unemployment. And so there's not gonna be any cyclical unemployment. So at this point here, no cyclical unemployment. Okay. So remember, um, we're, we're implying that the long run, essentially, long run aggregate supply curve is vertical. So now we're going to actually translate that over into the long run Phillips curve. So the long run Phillips curve, again, inflation and unemployment. We are also going to have a long run Phillips curve. Okay. So in the long run, employment is determined by output, which in the long run doesn't depend on price level. So keep in mind, again, with the long run Phillips curve, you're going to be at your natural rate of unemployment. Right here is our natural rate of unemployment. So you're in our U, so your natural rate of unemployment is going to be right here. Um, and there does remain structural and frictional unemployment. And these two aren't actually predictably affected by inflation. So here we just proved that a vertical long run aggregate supply curve leads to a vertical long run Phillips curve. So the last little things that I want to talk about, again, like I said, we won't be testing over um, 17.2, 3, and 4, um, but I do want to make a note about 17.4. Again, like we said, before 1960s, the idea that the Phillips curve um, was true and um, held true um, was um, accepted by some economists because the relationship did seem to to indicate that it was a pattern. However, as you can see here, I just graphed this information um, using Fred data um, from the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank to show you essentially why it's difficult to analyze and draw a sound conclusion from the Phillips curve. Because if you look here, I mean, this is only from the last decade of data, but we see we have CPI, our consumer price index, um, which is a good indicator of kind of inflation, um, graphed along with the unemployment rate as well. And we can see that it is all over the place. Like the, there's no really consistent trend. And so that's why now really the Phillips curve um, has been uh, essentially called into question whether or not it's a reliable um, model for policymakers. But that pretty much sums up chapter 17. So if you have further questions, comments, or concerns, please uh, let me know.